What's going on YouTube? Back here with another video today. Today's video we're going to be working on the lightning. If you guys didn't see our last video, I'll put a card to that up in this top corner here. But we did some wide open throttle pulls and came home to find oil all over the engine bay. I mean everywhere. After doing a little bit of research and some trial and error, process of elimination, whatever you want to call it, we found out it is coming from the blower snout. Basically, we are somehow getting pressure into that front gearbox on the blower, and it blew the seal out and is blowing oil all over the engine bay. So today we're going to be pulling the snout, showing you how to do that. Basically, we're going to pull the snout, check for any bearing damage, anything like that. If there is none, hopefully, we can clean it all up, clean the mating surfaces of both sides up, reseal it with some black RTV, fill it up with supercharger oil, and hopefully this seal will hold. Um, I was given some tips on how to prevent pressure from getting in there. We think it's coming through one of the screw holes and basically to prevent that you just put a little bit of Loctite on the bolts before you tighten them back up. So we'll be Loctiting the bolts using some black RTV and hopefully we can get this thing to seal up and have no more issues because I'm about over this thing having issue after issue but I guess that's how project cars go. So we're going to go ahead and show you everything you're going to need and get to it. So. Let's get to it. All right, so this is everything you're gonna need. Um, this syringe comes in handy. You can find this at Pet Boys. You can also find it at like a Walgreens or Walmart or pretty much wherever. But find yourself a little plastic syringe and then just get yourself a little like, uh, this is Fish Tank Airline. Just cut yourself a short piece of that. And this is gonna be handy for sucking the oil out of the blower snout and also applying the new oil back in. Uh, for oil, we went to AC Delco GM Supercharger Oil because it is the same exact stuff as the Ford oil, but literally a third of the price. It's made in the same plant, same manufacturer, same everything. They just brand it and bottle it separately, and this GM stuff was like $12 a bottle, as where the Ford stuff was almost $57 a bottle at our local Ford dealer. It is freaking crazy for the same stuff. So we went ahead and went with this stuff obviously because I am not going to pay for the Ford brand I mean that's ridiculous 10 millimeter socket with a swivel to get the bolts off and then your appropriate Allen wrench for the front case basically this is your fill bolt right here and you'll just loosen that up oil should run out of there if it's full if it's not that's where you were going to go ahead and open it up suck the fluid out and then that's where you would if you were just doing a simple fluid change put the fluid back in until it runs out Tighten the bolt up and you're done. But we're gonna go ahead and loosen this up. It was super tight to begin with. We have already loosened it up to check and this sucker was empty. So it might be a little difficult to get it off of there. We've already broke it loose like I said. We checked it and it was bone dry. That's how we know that that's the oil that was slinging everywhere. But take this little guy out. Should have a little rubber seal on it. And that's your access to the supercharger oil right in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take this syringe, stick the airline in there, and start sucking the oil out of it, get as much as we can before we break those bolts loose. All right, so we got as much as we could out of there. And then basically we took the IAC plastic hose out of there just so it's out of the way. And we stuffed a bunch of rags down in here to catch any oil that's still in there. Cause I'm sure there's still gonna be some that comes out. It's not gonna be perfect. So stuff some rags down there just to catch any excess oil. And basically all we gonna do is go around and pop all these bolts loose, take them out. And then you might have to hit on the snout a little bit to get this seal to break here or take something flat and kind of wedge it in there but I don't suggest that because you could score the metal and leave some slots or whatever I, I would not suggest doing that. I'd just smack on the snout a little bit and it should pop loose but we're gonna go ahead and pop the bolts loose and take those out first
All right, so we got that broke loose pretty fairly easy. Just took a little dead blow hammer and kind of smacked it a little bit and it popped right off. And everything does look pretty good. I don't think we caused any damage to anything in there by running it with no oil. We didn't run it very long with no oil. We caught it, I think, fairly quickly. So everything looks to be good in here. One thing to watch out for is this piece here. You just want to make sure there's no backlash and the holes are not hollowed out. Basically, before we took it off, I forgot to tell you this, but we just kind of spun it back and forth to make sure there's no backlash. It was nice and tight and spun nice and smooth. So make sure this piece here is good. These holes will wallow out over time and you'll have too much play and that's when you need to rebuild and you need to replace that part. But everything looks really good in there. We just recently rebuilt this blower, so I was really hoping that we didn't cause any damage because everything's pretty new. But everything looks good here as well. So all we have to do is basically we're going to clean this surface here and the mounting surface here with some lacquer thinner or alcohol or something just to get all this old crap off of there. And then we'll take some RTV, black RTV, Permatex, and then we'll lay a nice bead around this surface here, trying to go around all the holes real nice. We'll do a real good job with the RTV. And then we'll go back over there, put it on, finger tighten everything, let it set for a half hour to an hour, and then tighten it all up, let it cure overnight, and then tomorrow we can put some oil in it. But we're gonna go ahead and get to cleaning these surfaces off. I'm probably not gonna film all that, pretty redundant stuff, but just gonna clean it up real nice, lay our RTV, put the snout back on. All right guys, so we're back here. It's been a couple days. We got everything sealed up real good. Everything was back together. Went out for a test hit, still oil everywhere. So we do have some bad news, the lightning is down again. Basically we pulled the snout back off, packaged it up, sent it to Jokers, and he's gonna replace the seal where the pulley is and all the other seals in there. He's gonna re basically reseal it up. Um, Hopefully retouch the powder coat up too. I asked him if that's possible. So it did chip a little bit as we pulled everything apart and took it off and had a little bit peeled back. But if not, it's no biggie. We'll just do a little touch up with some nail polish or something similar. But anyway, so that's back apart. As you can see, we just kind of taped it up and that way no gunk or anything gets in there. Probably unnecessary, but you know, can't hurt. Just put a little bit of tape on there to keep everything out of the gearbox, keep it nice and clean. Not that the hoods is not gonna be shut and the garage be shut anyways, but went ahead and take the extra precautions keep it clean and put the bolts all back to the holes that way if any of them holes did happen to break through into the case we keep anything from getting into the case and all that you know good stuff so anyways so that stuff's back on the way up to jokers he's going to reseal it for us maybe touch up the powder coat i don't know depends if he can or not i'm not too worried about it but so while that's being done we are going to go ahead and end this video and in the next video I'm probably going to spin this thing around because you can drive it without the supercharger. Just pull the supercharger belt off and it'll just run like a pig but you can drive it. So we are going to go ahead and spin this thing around and basically have the rear end sticking outside of the garage and we are going to get to work on grinding those stock calipers down so we can fit these bad boys on there. We're going to solve our traction issue. We're going to grind down the stock calipers. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to get them 15s on there. Probably going to order some more dailyable tires because right now it's got like some slick slicks on there. But we're going to go ahead and get those fitted. All that good stuff this week. So stay tuned for that, guys. If you like this video, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. If you want to subscribe for more, subscribe for more. And uh, see you next time.